I talked earlier about how important geologic time is as one of the big ideas of earth science. And I can demonstrate that using this clock. What I'm going to do is imagine that the whole history of earth, the 4.567 billion years since our planet first formed along with the rest of the solar system is, is one day, one 24 hour day. Now, it's interesting, the age of the Earth is almost exactly one-third the age of the universe since the Big Bang. So the Big Bang would have occurred two days earlier. But we're starting now at midnight, and at this point, the Sun and the whole rest of the solar system forms. And what I'm going to do is start to roll the clock forward. Now, these earliest times in Earth's history, the first couple hundred million years, we have almost no record of this. The, the rock was constantly being altered and changed. And so we don't, don't really know what happened in Earth from looking at Earth rocks. But interestingly, we do by looking at rocks on other planets like Mars or, or our nearest neighbor, the Moon. And it turns out at this point, um, there were massive objects flinging about the inner solar system, a period called the late heavy bombardment. And it seems as if Jupiter and Saturn went into a resonant orbit that caused their orbits to be very elliptical. And this destabilized the solar system, flinging material all over the place. This is when the massive impact basins on Mars and the Moon formed, and probably on Earth as well. Well, things settled down after that. And, and somewhere in this period, life starts. Now, it, life for billions of years was just single-celled. And the first fossils we have that we know are real, uh, unambiguous forms of life go back about three and a half billion years ago. So that would be 5.30 in the morning. So at this point, single-celled life occurs enough that it's forming clumps and mats, and we have this preserved as fossils. As we go forward ahead in time, we get to periods where Life is diversifying. Uh, there are now supercontinents forming. Uh, the earliest land masses form, and uh, the, so the land begins to move apart. Plate tectonics has occurred. And by the time you get to about 10 in the morning or so, or maybe 10.30 in the morning, we're at a point where there's enough uh, oxygen in the atmosphere produced by photosynthesis of single cellular organisms that we now have permanent free oxygen in the atmosphere. Uh, this is about two and a half billion years ago. And this is really important because once you have oxygen, now animals can breathe. So evolution begins to form, um, to cause uh, animals to, uh, as well as plants and other organisms to begin to form. Now, as we run the clock forward, um, we get to a point about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon, we have all the continents coming together to form the supercontinent Columbia. Now, most of you have probably heard of Pangaea. Uh, that was a super landmass where all the continents were together. Well, it turns out at various times in Earth's past, the continents have moved apart and come back together. And there have been several supercontinents going back more than th three billion years ago. Well, a very large one occurred at about 1.8 billion years ago. That would correspond to about 2 p.m. Now, as we run the clock forward, we get to another supercontinent, and that's at about 6 p.m., or that works out to be about 1.1 billion years ago. And uh, in this case, we have the, all the southern land masses, South America, Antarctica, Australia, Africa, coming together to form a very large land mass called Gondwana. And that landmass actually stayed together through the formation of Pangaea. Now, another thing, uh, interesting thing happens at about uh, this time, uh, equivalent to 6 p.m. in the evening here, and that is the, the beginning of multicellular life. Now, up until this point, life had just been single-celled, but now we begin to have the evolution of more complex life forms. Only we have a very rough period because starting at about 800 million years ago or about 730 or so in the evening, we enter a period called the snowball earth uh, period where the whole surface of the oceans themselves froze over. So that early multi multicellular life would have had a very difficult time because, of course, the whole surface is incredibly cold. 
we get to about 600 million years ago. So now we get to a period of about uh, 8.30, the snowball earth is, is finally ending, and we get to about 9 p.m. This is about 540 million years ago, and here we have the start of the Cambrian period, an intense burst of diversity, multicellular life, takes off, we have all sorts of creatures in the ocean on the seafloor, worms begin to evolve, they start to evolve into fish, amphibians, reptiles, and then we're on the, the, the dramatic path of multicellular uh, or, uh, evolution. As we now go through the clock, we get to a period of about 10 p.m., and now we get to a period where the supercontinent Pangaea has formed. And so now all the land masses on one side of the planet, the planet's a little lopsided at this point. And as we start to run the clock forward ahead, we get to a period about 1040. And this is a very dramatic period. This is the most extreme of all the mass extinctions of life. Now, the path of evolution, as I'll talk about later, is not a smooth and continuous one. You have periods of extreme diversity. You also have sudden catastrophic events. And at this period, about 245 million years ago, the climate changes dramatically, triggered by massive volcanism in Siberia. And this causes about 90% of the different species to die off at this point. As we then run the clock ahead, if when we get to about 1140, we now get to the, um, the other very fa most famous extinction. This is at the end of the Cretaceous period, 65 million years ago, when the dinosaurs died off. Now, interestingly, the Permian-Triassic extinction 245 million years ago allowed for the diversification and expansion of dinosaurs. But this extinction, triggered by a meteor impact and also massive volcanism, um, caused the extinction of the dinosaurs that eventually led to the rise of mammals. And as we run the clock forward here, uh, onward, we get to um, a period where we have tremendous diversification of mammals. And I'm going to stop here at about 1158. So we're now just two minutes before midnight. And it's just at this point where some of the earliest bipedal humans, creatures like Artipithecus that lived more than five million years ago, um, began to evolve. So we're now, we have to get to two minutes before midnight before anything even remotely resembling a human exists. And in fact, I have to go to 11.59 and 15 seconds, in fact, I need a second hand here in order for me to be able to get to something that is even remotely human. The first human, Homo habilis, um, evolves at about this time. The first humans, the first actual human beings, I need, now need to run my clock all the way forward to 11.59 and 54 seconds. I am now six seconds before midnight, and the first humans are walking on the planet 200,000 years ago. First modern humans, Homo sapiens. Now, in terms of everything that we know, the very first cities, the rise of culture, the rise of civilization, I have to go to 11.59 and 59.8. Eight seconds. So I'm a fraction of one second before midnight, and everything that we know in our world, all the civilizations, all our known human history in terms of cultures and cities, all of that is occurring in that fraction of a second. And that gives you some sense of geologic time that everything that we know in our world that appears in our history textbooks occurred within the last second if the whole uh, history of Earth was a 24-hour day.